we, we were a very bold face even in the event of being caught in the, with the hands in the pot tena sema ah ah mkono ulikuwa bado sijashika nilikuwa karibu nachukua lakini sija sijachukua ah uh, for those who preach i can give you an illustration one of the illustrations i used to to preach about was that ah uh, those are regulation kwamba people should not eat game animals because that that's poaching and when somebody was found he said no i was not eating i was just tasting <laughs> you know he was found red handed with a, with a meat he said no i was not eating i was just tasting and that's how we are my friends get there and let us use the power of our vote to make a change this is a serious issue because corruption as you have been given those figures it's more it is more it's the cause of unemployment in this country if i ask among us seated here how many have brothers have sisters have their own children in the home looking for jobs Perhaps all of us will put up our hands. Now, why should that be? When we know the cause of that unemployment is corruption. The cause of the expensive things in hospitals, in whatever, it is corruption. And this year now, after five years, this is opportunity. Uh, let's go out. Let's go out and use the capacity that God has given us in that office of your religious organization. Let's do our part. Let the rest be left to God. Uh, I don't want to say much because this is an opportunity for all of us to discuss as I've said. Um, I will perhaps just summarize some of the points which can guide us as we talk about uh, what you want us to do because as I've said this is our meeting uh, after this we get a break come back when you are fresh and then uh, put your thoughts on the table and let us have them actioned on as we leave this place first clergy from all faiths let us utilize the positions of social and moral influence in advising the call for citizens to take up their civic responsibilities and elect leaders of integrity. That's why the influence that we have, let us use it to call upon our people to elect people of integrity. We also ask our citizens, because they are our last resort, as our seal has told us. They are the last people to vet if these people have passed our office, they have passed the IEBC's office, they are, not, they, are, they are not yet through with the voter. So to, they should proactively undertake an ethical and moral evaluation of all candidates contesting elections with a view to electing only men and women of integrity. This is a good a pathway to good governance after the elections and also the parents, parents and older members of society, to reflect on the deteriorating moral fabric of our society and to resume their social obligations of nurturing and promoting moral conduct. All of us and elders of the society, this is our time to begin to mold the new generation of Kenyans who will be good people. And the media and civil society, the media is very crucial in this work as they help to amplify what you people will be doing. They should illuminate the ears of our society and expose those responsible for moral decay in our country that will help to educate people on who is the right person to vote for 
and to those of us who are serving in the public service, we should integrate ethics and morality in our duties to the public. In doing so, we should embrace humility, compassion, and fairness as virtues that can propel our work. This way, we shall be able to bequeath the next generation of a just <coughs> and fair society. Now, the, the reason why religious uh, people can do this is basically that's our work, that's our God, our calling by God. Those of you who are able to read the Old Testament, uh, the book of First and Second Samuel, actually the entire compendium of First, Second, and First and Second Kings, is about politics. You see, there's an old man called Eli there. His era ends with the capture of the Ark of the Covenant, isn't it? And the nation of Israel thought they are finished. And then Samuel comes up. He relates with the people and God. But the main concern in that whole epilogue, I mean the discussion, is the type of leader that, that will advance God's values to the people. So God and, the, uh, and Samuel, of course, seeking God's guidance, is concerned about which type of leader is God, going, is God calling to, to help these people. Again, you will see a lot of concern for the people, the welfare of the people in that book. And you will see that interaction between people, God, and leaders. A big concern. And that's our calling as religious people. It's not something we are, we are picking from the air, no. It's not something we are talking because ESC has said it. No, it is our calling. And so I encourage you to pick up that calling and let us go out. I know we shall do it. I was sharing with my brother, uh, Father Muti, who told me he has not lost hope. <laughs> uh, he says, with this work together, we shall deliver a wonderful Kenya. So with those many remarks, I want to say thank you so much. I officially want to declare.